As campaigning resumed around the country on Monday, the police continued to investigate associates of the assailants, whose identities are known to the police but have not been made public as the inquiry is continuing. Twelve people were arrested in Barking, East London, on Sunday, although one, a 55-year-old man, was released without charge. Early Monday, the police entered two other addresses in East London, one in Newham and another in Barking, they said. The victims of the attack are believed to have come from several countries, but only one has been identified publicly, the Premier of British Columbia, Christy Clark, confirmed the death of Christine Archibald. Four police officers were among the wounded. Although there has been widespread praise for the professionalism and courage of the armed officers who shot and killed the assailants within eight minutes of being called Saturday night, the country's broader anti-terrorism strategy is being questioned. The commissioner of the Metropolitan Police has said that the Met is well-resourced, and they are, and that they have very powerful counterterrorism capabilities, and they do, Mrs. May said on Monday. We have protected counterterrorism policing budgets. We have also provided funding for an increase in the number of armed police officers. Since 2015, we have protected overall police budgets, and that's despite the fact that Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party in the House of Commons suggested that police budgets could be cut. Opposition politicians focus their fire on Mrs. May, who also gave a short speech outside her office in Downing Street on Sunday arguing that enough is enough, promising to shake up anti-terrorism and deradicalization policies, and calling for new efforts to curb the dissemination of extremist materials on the web. Some of Mrs. May's political opponents regarded her comments on Sunday as political and as a result in breach of the agreement to suspend campaigning. Late Sunday, Mr. Corbyn criticized the decrease in the number of police officers since 2010. You cannot protect the public on the cheap the police and security services must get the resources they need, not 20,000 police cuts, he said. He also accused the government of failing to publish a report on foreign financing of extremist groups undertaken in early 2016 for fear of upsetting foreign governments. Yes, we do need to have some difficult conversations, starting with Saudi Arabia and other Gulf states that have funded and fueled extremist ideology, he said. It is no good Theresa May suppressing a report into the foreign funding of extremist groups. Mr. Corbyn is also vulnerable on security issues because of past support for Irish Republicans and because of doubts he expressed two years ago about a so-called shoot-to-kill policy for police officers during serious terrorist attacks. Yvette Cooper, a Labour lawmaker and former chairwoman of the Home Affairs Select Committee, told the BBC that it was inappropriate and wrong to draw precise links between police numbers and individual attacks. But she said that fewer officers made it more difficult to gather information and to counter threats. In a series of interviews with the news media, Karen Bradley, the culture secretary, declined to answer when challenged over claims that the number of armed police officers had fallen in recent years. She focused instead on the need to increase cooperation with internet service providers to deprive extremists of a safe space online. The focus on terrorism would normally be expected to help the prospects of Mrs. May's party on Thursday, but her years overseeing anti-terrorism policy present a political problem, one that has been highlighted even by former political allies. I am so sick of Theresa May blaming others for terror when the system she presided over has obviously failed so lamentably, Steve Hilton, once a close advisor to Mr. Cameron, wrote on Twitter. Mrs. May, he added in a separate post, should be resigning, not seeking re-election. Continue reading the main story.